you know because yeah. that's where it could become like really toxic if it's only revolving around sex then it's like do we have anything else or is it just purely sexual like is that the only thing that's keeping us attracted to each other mm. but like if it's hypersexuality and like they're addicted and they have a high body count to that i think like oh, no. let's start off by doing what that's we crazy do, doing what we, we, oh my god <laughs> can english let's do what we do best introduce ourselves it's your boy sergio's talks my you know what i'm saying carl <laughs> welcome back to <laughs> <laughs> every time you know how many times i have to go and edit, like re-edit the video just to take out all the times we cough and sneeze uh-huh. What? Keep Don't going. forget to like, comment, subscribe. We are still in the Remarque studio. Yeah, don't forget five stars on Amazon. Um, we are still at the beautiful studio at Le Remarque. If you guys want to set up your podcast and get started, this is the place to be at. Whoa. Yo, you good? I have a really tough question to ask. Tough? Like, Did really you hit tough. Did I hit just No, but thanks, though. I've... Oh, my God, actually. Yeah, he looks like he has titties. Yeah, milky. Is bro. it the shirt? No, it's not. It's not even. Oh, sorry. Hey, yo. <laughs> I think All right, but it's a really tough question. Yeah. yeah. So, Jinx, you want me to so really think about what y'all are about to say. When you start dating someone, when is it okay to start farting in front of them? <laughs> wow. <laughs> On some real shit, shit though. <laughs> When is the uh, right time to oh let God. one loose? Uh, to let the silent ninja out? Uh, to let the birds out the cage? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. In my last relationship, bro, I think I farted it like in front of her like maybe like 12 times in like six years. Damn, wow. you're sweet. I it's, thought you were gonna say 12 times a day. Yeah, I was about to say 12 times a day. <laughs> no, but for real though, Shit. I I'm like at 10, 12 a day. You got that's that. that <laughs> Damn. I'll do it on purpose, bro. Okay, but wait, I know wait. it's coming. No, no, I get like, that. He's just gonna like a <laughs> he's gonna, not not the frequency, but like how deep into like when you're dating someone do you let the first fart go? Like what like a month. A month. Wow, I was gonna say like three months. Three months after three months? So like you like you've of dated dating, like dating. From, since first date until the time you fart one month Thirty, days. Three... 30 days then uh, let's get it. Thirty days or your money back. 30 days and you get that fart them. back you know why because <laughs> my farts do, my farts don't smell so it's, it's chill that's cap no bro, <laughs> I had know, one with you guys crazy. one with you that guys is that is crazy fart. this guy in the car that's exactly the, that's, that's the, the, the one time. I'm talking about yeah. one time that is bro I, I that shit was some, stinky winky bro <laughs> yeah but my food was not good that day well whatever was in there was dying that's <laughs> for sure holy shit uh, I have a question have you in your relationship have you ever seen your girl shit yeah no never never i tried my best never you tried your best tried my best to, to cut her off in? yeah to walk to, in to on her. her and somehow no she i'm always being yeah. so i got two questions on our last podcast that i think we could answer all right question is first question um my opinion has changed a question do you ever feel bad that your partner didn't feel comfortable or slash safe enough to tell you about her past, that part of her. And we're talking about that body oh. count. It was that part that we we're talking about body count. Like so let's she, say she's not comfortable enough to tell me my body count's like seventy five. Yeah. Except, oh sorry. I mean, I would feel bad. Yeah. Because if, be, if she lied to you. No, if she doesn't want to. Not. I get that she doesn't want to tell me, but I feel like we have to trust each other and just be honest with each, each other, you know? Mm. So you telling me your body count whatsoever, like, I like you regardless. How do you so, guys feel about when a girl says, like, they don't tell people everything? Like, they keep certain secrets to themselves? I think everyone has a private life, and that's okay. I'm no an open way. book. Oh, yeah, you are. But you said, like, people have um, yeah, like some, like, like, yeah. I, like, I've been told before that, like, there's certain things that people, like, just don't know about me. And I'm like, well, you know. I'd like to be that person where you feel like you can talk to me about those things, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm. So, I, like, it makes me feel some type of way where, like, like I, it's kind of, I'm not sad, but, like, I'm, I'm kind of, like, bummed out that this person doesn't trust me fully to be able to be, like, I want to tell you, like, everything. Yeah. Um, it could just be, like a, like, a situational thing where maybe that's how they feel right there and then, and then maybe later on they'll open up, be, like, maybe, yeah. like, a few months later, a few years later. 
But like, I kind of feel like if you are with someone, that would be like cool to know everything about the person. Yeah, you, you know? get to know the person. You love them even more from what you learn, you know? Yeah, because I feel like if you're with a partner, you should also be with someone that you're not fear of being judged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. therefore, they shouldn't feel like they should hold back or keep those kind of secrets to themselves. Exactly. And I mean, if it comes to a point where like they, they just don't, they don't want to because it's something that's maybe like a little bit more so like traumatic. You know, that yeah. might have happened to them. Yeah. Then I get that. If you don't want to talk about it, like I don't necessarily need to know about that either. You'll so. never know if you don't talk about it. Right. Okay. The second question is from the same person. Do you think it's just as important to talk about hypersexuality and where it stems from as much as body counts? Hypersexuality. Yeah, I think as I, I understand. At, at first, when you read it to me, I didn't understand it, but now reading it, I think I understand it. Do you want me to go with definition? I, yeah, just just in case, but I think I know what she's talking about. There's Compulsive something. sexual behavior is sometimes called hypersexuality. Hypersexuality disorder or sexual addiction. Oh. It's an excessive preoccupation mm. yeah. with sexual fantasies, urge, and behaviors that is difficult to control because of your distress. Sex addict. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Fuck, basically. Nephilim. Right. I think there's degrees to it. I think... Like, if you're addicted to it, it's like, you know, it's obviously something that I think you could go and seek out professionally. I think there's things that you would have to do because otherwise, like, if it's an addiction, that means it's interfering with your day-to-day life. You yes. know, it's like, mm. it's affecting you personally. Like, I'm someone who is, who, by, by like, a brief definition, I would consider myself to be a hypersexual. Not, but, like, only, like, with my girl. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the one that I'm, I'm actually dating. With anybody else, I'm not. But it's it's never become like an addiction. You know, I never base my relationship off of sex, even mm-hmm. though like, you know, doing it two, three times a day is not, is not a problem, but it doesn't become an addiction where like that's our only form of being connected to one another, you know, because yeah. that's where it could become like really toxic. If it's only revolving around sex, then it's like, do we have anything else connection. or is it just purely sexual? Like, is that the only thing that's keeping us attracted to each other? Mm-hmm. But like if it's hypersexuality and like they're addicted and they have a high body count to that, I think like it would make more sense per se, that you would have a higher body count as opposed to someone that's just deliberately, you know, just sleeping with people and getting their numbers up. Yeah. Like, this is an addiction. This is not something that you could, you know, necessarily, typically control. necessarily control, therefore not have anything to say about it. Even someone's body count, regardless of addiction, you don't really have a say in it. Yeah. But it's just like the stigma kind of breaks when it becomes like an addiction, mm-hmm. you know? I agree with you, though. I'm not, not going to lie. I think, uh, well, you said it well. So what do you think? Same. I low key forgot the question, but yep. <laughs> just, anyways, <laughs> the, the past few months, obviously, since you guys have been back, we've been really on this like super like grind, go hustle mode. And, um, you know, you guys had gone to like Love Island and stuff like that. And um, I, you know, one thing about grinding and hustling is about t- taking risks, right? Thanks. And I kind of wanted to know, you know, Whenever we're confronted with, you know, risks and stuff like that, we're always on the fence, you know, whenever we want to go somewhere, go on a trip or do something like a day out or a few hours before you're, you're kind of checking it out. You're kind of like, ah, you know what? Finally, I don't feel like I want to do this, you know, but then you either go through with it or you don't. Yeah. So like up, up until before you guys left to the TV show, did you guys feel like you had a moment where you were like, I don't know if I want to go on the TV show anymore. I don't feel like it's right for me. I don't want to leave or stuff like that. Or were you guys like. I'm going, like, no questions asked. Even, like, on the plane, you're like, I'm excited. Or was there a time a little bit before or on the day where you guys were just maybe planning on backing out of the TV show? Um, Before I left, no, I was happy as hell. To mm. leave, I just wanted a vacation at okay. first, you know? So I was happy as hell just to leave regardless. But uh, there was a point in the, t- in the show where I was like, oh, I want to go back home, you mm-hmm. know? Because I was sick of it. I was tired. I was like, yeah, I want to go back home. I want to sleep. I want to eat my, my stuff, whatever, you know? But... It's just, I think it's just a phase that everyone had, just like a week where we just want to go home whatsoever. But the overall, I'm just, I was just too excited to, uh, first to get there, you know? Right, right, right. At, at first, yeah. Mm, from my part, I I didn't think of it. The, what made me rethink is my parents, actually. My parents didn't want me to go on a TV show and they like made it seem like it was a bad thing. Like it's just more negative than positive, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, I won the show, mm-hmm. so my parents were, like, completely, like, oh, my God, no, it was a good idea, blah, 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 and they changed. But you know how parents are, they're protective, and mm-hmm. sometimes they'll just be like, they don't want us to go on TV and then uh, be a fool of ourselves or something like that, and then they'll, like, they want to be there for us, right? Yeah. So that's the only moment that I was like, mm, but for, like, 
bro. Like 90% of me was like, I'm going, mm -hmm. I don't care. And same thing as he said, uh, we all had that moment. Me, it was spe specifically at the end. I couldn't, st like, I didn't want to stay. I was like, I want to leave. Mm -hmm. But the end was coming and I knew it was like a you couple can't. weeks or yeah. days left. I was like, okay, why not? Like, you mm -hmm. did all those 60 days for what? Like, just stay there, you know? Is there another point in your guys' life that you could remember an instance where, like, you had the opportunity to do something and decided not to pursue it or you guys ended up pursuing it, but you know that just before you did, like, jump at it, you were kind of, like, reluctant about going through with it or whatnot? The most simple answer for me would be university. To go School. or not to go to university. Yeah, yeah like I, I started it and then I was like, yeah, no, that's not my thing. But then we think about it and restart it again. And then after change school, I restarted again. And then I'm just like between those worlds of like, do I do university and doing potentially a job that I don't even like? Because I know myself. I know what I like. I like being like more. um, Free? Uh, Yeah, self, self made. Let's put it this mm -hmm. way. Just doing me, doing my shit whatever it is and not having like a um schedule i'm not that type of person my schedule has to be like the monday to the tuesday to whatever it's mm -hmm. all different and i love it the fact that it's always different mm -hmm. it could be stressful but it's crazy because having my nine to five has been more stressful to me which is both of them's jobs but at the end of the day we always have stress it's just different form of stress from any kind of situation so yeah, yeah for me that i backed up and came back in blue lies university most definitely damn Get that? It was probably football. There was uh, basically uh, invited to camps in the states, and I did two camps. There was a uh, one team that really like wanted to see me, and um, I wanted to go, but I ended up not going because I was like, oh, it's too far, and I don't want to drive there. I don't want to start asking for lifts whatsoever. So I just didn't go, and that's my biggest regret until till, till today because that could have been like that one time. That could have like changed everything, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So then again, that's my the biggest regret I have. But uh, except for that, there was like another time that I was supposed to go for a um, combine, and I went. And from that combine, especially, another team saw me and they're like, "Oh, you should co come us come see us to Ottawa." And then I was like, "Okay, yeah, why not?" I went to Ottawa because of that combine, and then from there, that's where another like two teams from the states saw mm -hmm, me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So just. Going to that little comment, I was like, okay, I'm not. I don't want to pay 150, and then I just ended up paying it. And I was like, might as well do it. That right. got me to, you know, where I got, you know. So cool. I was happy. I just went and I paid for that little mm -hmm. amount, like, as if it was just an investment. An but, investment. Well, yeah. that's the thing I was about to say. And that's a good point. A lot of people tend to like hold back on things, especially like from a financial standpoint, but mm -hmm. they don't understand that it's an investment that you're doing. Yeah. You know, it was worth it. Like I'd rather have. 2k in my bank account have to spend the 2k in an investment and be broke for that period but having it invested into myself mm -hmm. rather than not spend that 2k miss out on opportunity and just be sitting on 2k exactly you know because you can make you can be making more by doing something about it you know yeah so. long term further down the line you know that yeah. 2k that you spend is going to come back you know 10 times fold if you put it in the right place but also money comes and goes even if that sometimes investments you can do bad investment but i don't think there's such thing as a bad investment in yourself though never so like you have that 2k if you spend that 600 dollars on that course and this other 800 course or whatever and it's on you and for you at that moment you don't know if that cor course is gonna pay off or whatever but in three years when you have that mm -hmm. job that person it's going to be like, oh, my God, you did those cor courses? Then I'll give you 100 k more on your job just because you did those courses. You're right. going to be, uh, right? But you never see it like that. Regardless, if you have your 2K and you're like, no, I don't want to spend on the courses, this, that 2K is going to leave anyways. You'll spend it on food. You'll spend it on something else. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But rather just spend it on you, you know? So yeah. I, think, I think people should, in general, think about that, that invest in yourself has to be the most important thing you could do. And it's never a loss. Mm -hmm. if it's in yourself yeah i remember me too is in regards to to sports and it was more so like from that day i think i probably never said no to like an opportunity after that uh, it was a day i remember i forgot what, what age i was but i went to go try out for for a soccer team and my dad had came to watch my mama came to watch uh you know the, the tryouts unfold right um and basically what had happened was, you know, I was, I, I, it was at a point in my life where I had a lot of insecurities about myself. And then when it came to sports, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't have a great left foot. You know, I don't feel like I have what it takes in order to compete in order to get, you know, uh, drafted and picked. Right. Yeah. So we had gone to the complex where all the trials were happening. Right. 
I got changed. I was ready to go. And basically, you know, I said bye to my parents because they were going to watch from the bleachers. And like as I'm walking through the tunnel, I I, I choked up. Like I, I, I choked. Like I was getting like I was so stressed out of like, you know, being you know embarrassing myself, not being good enough and mm. stuff like that. That I, I I turned back and I'm like, yo, like I like I can't do it. And I remember like I was like I was crying because I was like so fucking like distraught about the whole situation, you know. And um, you know, I went to go tell my parents. I went to go see them in the bleachers, and they were kind of like. You know, like, are you sure? Like, you know, like, you know, you are good enough and stuff like that. And my dad was the one who was kind of just like quiet. You know, my mom was like consoling me, but my dad was quiet. He was like, "Okay, well, we're not leaving. You're gonna watch the tryouts go down." So we sat there and we watched the tryouts happen. And as I'm seeing the tryouts happening, right, I mean, in my head, I'm like, "I'm better than these guys. Like, I could have done this easily." Like I'm looking at them I'm like, what the fuck? People are fucking up. People are fumbling. People are, you know, are mess- messing up. And my dad, in all silence, he didn't say a single word since we started. He was like, you think you couldn't do that? And I was like, damn. Damn. That's crazy. So from that moment on, having not done that, because who knows where I would have ended up? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't live a life with regrets. I don't, I don't regret it. Yeah. I just use that as like the turning point in my life mm-hmm. where I no longer said no to opportunities, you know? Yeah. And like that's why like it's instilled in my mind from that day, because I don't want to have that thing on my like that, that kind of thought on my conscience anymore. You know, Ooh. that's a big move from your dad though. Still, yeah. Well, my dad like for um, I mean my dad is he, he was he's always been a high performance athlete, right? Like he you know left Argentina to pursue karate. You know he was doing it in Canada. Like he's he's been world champion. He's been Pan American champion. He's coached like the the Canadian uh, karate team. So like he like he's gone through a lot and seen through a lot and has a lot of discipline and all that stuff. So he knows at that moment probably what I was feeling because he's trained, you know, yeah, like Olympic level athletes, right? Yeah. So he knows me feeling that way. He's seen all his athletes go through that before going to, you know, to a competition or before a fight, you know? So it was nothing new to him. It was just like now it's like you're not my athlete, you're my son. Yeah. So I kind of have to be a father and mm. a coach at the same time, you know? But, uh, so, but yeah, but I think like just in the few words that he said was enough for me to like click in to, to get it, you know, like, what do you guys, what is it exactly that you guys feel like you're chasing right now? Like, what is it exactly you guys feel is like your, your end goal? Like, what is it like that you guys are all pursuing right now? What are you guys trying to make it lead up to? My answer would be happiness and freedom. And I know most people like money, rich, and blah, blah, blah. I don't have an amount of money like... Uh, like a dollar figure? I don't have a dollar figure because whatever amount that's going to make me happy, I'll be happy with that. Mm-hmm. As simple as that. Uh, I'm obviously seeking stability, family, wife, kids. That's I think that's what makes it what makes life beautiful. Mm-hmm. You get me? Um obviously relationships friendships all of that uh to have stable to have love i think love love is awesome so as as love and friendship love and relationship love and everything um i think that's a beautiful thing so that's what i'm personally like seeking um i don't know about you damn me it is money (laughs) damn i'm always first of all happy so but money would add like you know a little okay yeah. I'm happier, you know, because I could do whatever with it. No, you know? but that's okay. That's that's blessed. Still. Exactly. I'll be comfortable. I'll be. I'll have my freedom because mm-hmm. I can do whatever. I can buy whatever. I can eat whatever, and I can go wherever. You know. Yeah. yeah. So. But, but it's a it's a different way of saying the same thing. I said like freedom. Mm-hmm, yeah. Low key, you want freedom. Yeah, but freedom with with more money is nice too. <laughs> yeah, most definite. But let's say let's say you have five hundred k a year. Yeah, with five hundred k a year, you can buy whatever the fuck you want. Okay, you get yeah. that right. Yeah, but you can also get ten million a, a a year. You can buy whatever the fuck you want. You yeah, know? like you see why I say like, oh, there's no necessarily like a dollar sign for me. Yeah, the wealthy people always say like, once you start making over, example, ten mil, mm-hmm. the lifestyle is the same because nothing has a price. You know, you could get anybody that's making 10 million a year plus could all get the same Lambo. They could all get the same Bugatti. They could all get, you know, a whole bunch of things, you yeah. know. Unless we're talking about the fucking princess in Dubai. It was mm. like different. Like they're, they're auctioning fucking license plates 
for millions of dollars like that's a different kind of lifestyle that's, you know that's crazy. but they have a different kind of wealth yeah, you know yeah. but that's what i'm saying even even you like the way you're happy i don't think you have like a dollar sign i think you like you don't have like a an amount i think even with six figures with seven figures whatever it is you'll be happy regardless as, as long as you can pay your shit and buy food whenever you want that's what i was gonna say Mm. Yeah. I think I think I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for you is actually like relation around you. That's the most important thing. The fact if you can have like good friendships and a good like love life, yeah, good family life, mm -hmm. and then obviously if you have like if good those of three money, aspects, friendship, family, and love life, are great, I'm happy. Exactly, right. that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but some know. for other people, they don't care about none of that. All yeah. they want is like it's, that seven figure mm -hmm. a year and whatever. I don't seek that. I prefer having a friendship with you guys. That, that's why. Well, well, that's a I'll say a hot name. Some people will be like Ugh, in the comments, Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. So Andrew Tate, Tate said something, and I really agree with it. He said you can be uh, broke with your boys in Bali having no money but you're with your boys you guys gonna laugh every single day and have yeah, fun a great experience a great experience Thanks. and then you can have so much money and that stigma of like i'd rather cry in a villa or blah blah, blah. there's i don't think there's a, a beauty to being so rich and alone mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not even enjoying your money with people mm -hmm. you can't you're not even like the the that's what's nice about having money is like what, what's the let's say tomorrow i give you 10 mil what's the first thing you're gonna do I'm sharing with my friends, family, and love, and then we're just leaving. Mm. That, we're leaving. But you, you get what I mean. That's that's yeah. love because you wanna you wanna make them happy. You yeah. wanna buy a new house to your mother or like. There's no way I'm keeping ten mil for myself. Mm. Right. You you get you get the point. That's why I don't I don't understand that that thing. Oh, I'd rather uh, cry in a Lamborghini. Oh, than all cry in Lamborghinis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. So for for me, most definitely, I rather I rather have a, a good amount of money. But like the most important thing, if you tell me, oh, do you want to keep your friendship and and loved ones and blah blah, I'll choose that any any time of the day. Then yeah. if mm -hmm. someone tell me you'll be a billionaire, but be be alone, mm -hmm. it's like oh, like, have another take though. What is it? You wanna... No, like you can be happy and have your millions and have people around you, but they're not if they're not like real in a way. Yeah. it's pointless. You can throw parties with a bunch of random people, and it's just. Not as nice as a night with the of your boys, mm -hmm. you know. Another take, I think Sneeko or Andrew Tate said that. I think it's Andrew Tate. Uh, he said because you know uh, girls that they say they they just want to pursue their career and they don't want to like they don't care about having kids. They don't care about having a man. They they think they don't need blah blah, blah all this. Um, but he says when you're gonna be forty three and all your brothers and sisters are going to have kids and a beautiful family and you're going to be the only one that has no one uh, and you can afford an extra Gucci bag, is, right. is this going to make you happy or like the three kids that comes from you or like something like that? You get me? Yeah, that's a thing that a lot of <clears throat> women that think like that, they forget that they have a biological clock, right? Mm. Yeah. At a certain point, it becomes dangerous the older you get to try to become pregnant, you mm. know? And a lot of girls that are like that, what ends up happening is that they end up settling. They end up just ending up their like their life with whatever the guy they can get you know because mm -hmm. they know that their their clock is ticking so they're like uh oh, i need I, I need a baby you mm -hmm. know uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna settle for whatever next guy that has like a decent amount of criterias to settle down with and have a kid and usually they end up in a, in a toxic relationship of some sorts yeah. you know um i think life could also like could always be done in in like in moderation mm -hmm. you know with yeah. a good balance you could still grind, and I think that's when you know you have a good relationship is when you're still able to grind and be able to concentrate on your relationship at the same time. Nice. You know, yeah. like it also depends like what kind of person you want. If she just wants to be like a stay-at-home mom, then that's 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 a different you know story, right? If you want to be the provider, like there's a, a whole bunch of different nuances. But for girls like that, they have a biological clock that at some point you know they're like, I need to settle down and have kids. Uh, because at the end of the day, I don't see how you w wouldn't want to have kids. I mean, I get it for some people. Maybe they, it's not for them, but I feel just from like a like a human instinct standpoint, it's yeah. like your body's goal is to have kids. Mm. You have your period once a month because you didn't have a kid, right? Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So like, it's you can't you can't go against nature and how things are supposed to happen. You know, our goal is to reproduce, which is why a big thing is, um, you know, why a lot of people say like. You know, like uh, jerking off is bad for you because when you do that, you're accomplishing your life goal. 
You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. So your body subconsciously is like, you know, it's like, you know, it's demotivated. I don't, I don't need. Yeah, you've got your dose of dopamine, right? And now, like, you're done. That's why, like, there's always, like, post-nut syndrome, right? You know what I mean? Because you've accomplished your, your, your lifetime goals and therefore you could just, like, relax. So the more you do that, the more you're putting yourself into a state that's demoralizing, right? And you're, you're you know, you're overdosing yourself on dopamine, making yourself even lazier and comfortable without and we do that a lot too mm. we get dopamine from jacking off we get dopamine from scrolling on tiktok mm. we get dopamine from doing a lot of things that have uh what's that uh, instant gratification a lot of dopamine like people get from eating you know yeah <laughs> well like eating junk <laughs> like, eat, 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 eating junk food you know what I'm saying? um so it's it's very important and honestly since i since i've stopped first off i stopped watching porn it's been months ever since the, the first time we had the conversation i cut that out completely and then i also i cut off uh jerking off i mm-hmm. haven't done it in in months you know and not only that but after my after my last breakup i was uh like i i intentionally made myself made myself i was intentionally celibate for like Four, three four months mm. you know it's crazy <laughs> it is it is crazy why you say something you did the same thing almost the what syllabusy right yeah you oh no thing. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, f- four months that's cute the fuck yeah you went two years yeah two years syllabusy yeah yeah easy that's crazy okay it's cute i, I tried bro what do yeah, you want yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit get to my but level bitch it's a good topic for the guys out there and what has it done to you to stop jerking off and to stop watching porn? Because a lot mm-hmm. of guys here not gonna watch this video. Be like, they know they have to stop. They don't know why they should stop. And they see right. many videos on TikTok, but they don't see if they why they should do it. So I think it's a good topic if you explain what it has yeah. done to you. Um, like I don't really understand like the videos. I feel like people are trying to make it like super grandiose. They say like you know like my attention span has been great and like a whole bunch of certain things that they've like quantified. And I'm just like. I, I don't really see that. Like the, yeah. the major change that I've seen is like I I like I don't look forward to them. Therefore, like I'm not waiting for a moment where I could just go and you know mm-hmm. and jerk off and get that feeling, right? If anything, I'm just replacing those thoughts by working, for example. So if anything, I'm just distracting myself from my distraction, you know. Mm. So yeah. rather as opposed to like thinking with my dick, well, I'm actually thinking with my brain and actually doing something about it instead, you know. So I think that's why people might think like their concentration is a lot better and stuff like that. But things like brain fog and stuff like that, I didn't really see a difference. I just mostly saw th- things within myself from a product pr- from a pr- productivity standpoint. And then also with my, you know, with the women I, I was with, I, le- I needed less stimulus. It was a lot easier to get uh, you know, to get up, mm. you know, because I didn't have like this all this back image of yeah, like I didn't, I wasn't always trying to recreate like a fucking porn scene that I saw. You know, mm-hmm. I I took it as it was because you're not gonna get that. Like, porn is like is, is for entertainment, right? They're entertainers. They know what they're doing. There's a practice behind it, right? They know all the tricks and cameras and this and that. You can learn from there. You you can, but the thing is like like no no but not everybody fucks like a porn star Ooh. so then like when you go from watching that to then being with someone that's not like that mm-hmm. you're like this is shit but yeah. this is actually what Real. like 90 percent of, how, of yeah. how people have sex yeah. right so i would say more from like in terms of like a, a reason why people should stop jerking off because it's going to be good for your relationships right it's going to be good for your your sex drive too you know Facts. if you're not fucking all the time when you see your girl or a girl you're going to be like you're going to be able to perform better. Mm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> exactly. Pumpy. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's stuff like that. And then from, I guess, from a productivity standpoint, but a productivity has a whole different subject on its own because you could not jerk off but still not be someone who's productive. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, facts. So that's a whole different side thing. I have one big question. You meet a girl and that girl asks you to be a stay-at-home dad. Would you do it? She makes all the money, all the bread, doesn't ask her. A stay-at-home dad? Hell no. I, that'd be so boring. Absolutely not. She makes all the bread. She makes $10 million a year. You don't have to do anything. You just have to take care of the kids. I think it would be, I think it would be fine for a little bit, but then I, I can't, think... Yeah, yeah, you can't... No, I can, you can do you. You can do all your little passions. You can... You can go to the gym. You can do a. You can be a personal trainer if you want. Like okay, so I'm but I'm not at home. No, but I got a gym at home. What I'm saying is, is like let's say she works that big hours, those 
maybe 14 hours a day, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're just chilling. You wake up at 11, you can go to the gym for two hours, you come back. The only thing that matters is taking care of your kids. You have your little, your life, whatever it is. If you're active on TikTok, it's your thing. But overall, she's the money maker. The reason I'm asking you guys is I had a girl ask me that. That ass. That ass. You had a girl offering you 10 mil? No. <laughs> I was like, bro, what the fuck are you still doing here? No, but her job would be six figures a year. And she was like, I want a stay-at-home job. And I'm interested in you. That was a long time ago. I feel like it become, I feel like your life becomes very, like... like stagnant. Stagnant and, and, like, purposeless, you know? Also, yeah. There's no, like... like, I, get uh, like I get that you're taking care thrill. of kids and that's a purpose. But I feel like... I feel like the day that you're going to be on your deathbed, you're going to be like, what the fuck did I accomplish for myself? There's no thrill of like having like something to achieve. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I would do it. I know you would. You <laughs> whoa, digger. whoa. Of course you Absolutely. Would. He's a fucking gold digger. Yeah. <laughs> fucking whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not paying for a date. <laughs> <laughs> no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Going for a walk and ice cream. <laughs> Simple, right? But yeah, give me 10 mil. You know what I'm saying? First of all, first of all, I'm not no gold digger. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? On some real ass shit. Since when that word ever came out of y'all's <laughs> mouth for me. I pay my own shit. Since, I'll pay some since shit you s- just said that you would be a fucking home dad for ten milli. Okay, so all the women's that stare at, at home mothers are gold diggers. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I had to say no quickly after that. No, they're gonna cut that part. No, we're we'll make sure that we're gonna cut I'm that. Gonna, part. I'm gonna cut that part. I yeah. want. I want to get the vile factor. Yeah. <laughs> you be um, quick. no the reason i'm saying i would do it is is because of what we talked about earlier my purpose is is love kids and everything mm. and i would still do things that i love let's say if i do real estate i would just do it less like really less not full time i would sell two houses a year or something mm. and i don't care really about accomplish something crazy for the world or whatever if my goal right now yes obviously i want to break the ma- the matrix but if I can live a beautiful life with my kids, my kids being healthy and me being there for them, going to their games, doing everything for them, why not? My take on that is is I have I have just like one issue about that. Yeah, is it's because it. like yeah, like having the kids and things like that is great. And the the one thing though is that I feel I feel like if you're not living a life for yourself. I don't feel like you could provide the best life for your kids. Like if you are not taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and you do not love yourself, for example, I don't feel like you could give that same 100% uh, you know, potential to your kids. Mm. Even if you have time. Even if you have the time, right? So like, yeah, like 10 million, but like, are you pursuing your goals? Like, are you actually happy? And if you're not, then, you know, you're not able to provide that to your kids. So I feel like if you're living a life of purpose, right? It's better. That you're doing things for yourself. Like, I think it's long term, it's better because who knows, maybe it's going to be like that. Sure. For a little bit, but maybe down the line, it, you know, it's going to catch up to you and you're going to be like, what the fuck did I do? I'm tired of life? waking up at 11, going to the gym only. And then, you know, just doing. Because I was asked a question, like, what's my biggest fear? And my fear is dying without having utilized my full potential mm-hmm. to what I can do for myself, yeah. you know, and what I could do in the world, you know? So like if I can't if I can't accomplish that, then it's kind of like yeah, you know, kids is, is you know is great and all, but I'm still left kind of have lived an unfulfilled life. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's one thing that I, that I did want to say though is that I feel like um, I feel like when you know when taking a risk and trying to achieve the goals that we want to achieve, like we, that like we just spoke about, I feel that you know obviously we as people also have to change, right? Like you can't be the same person you were yesterday in order to be the person that you're trying to become either, right? Like, let's say you want to become successful. Let's say you want to become, you know, big on social media and you want to become a personal trainer. There's certain things that you have to do discipline-wise and also within your character and habits that you have to take on in order to become that person, Exactly. right? And I feel that a lot of people don't know what it takes in order to actually reach, like, your full potential. Mm. And you got to fall in love with the process. Mm. It's not just the result. You got to fall in love with the process and then... You yeah. get the result from that. But then again, falling in love with it, you'll just be happier at yeah. the end, you know? You also have to fall in love with failing. Also, because you learn from that. Yeah. You I mean, I feel like failing. I feel like there's so many things that we go through life that, are, that, are, that there's so much similarities and correlations. I feel like failing 
in like a business aspect is just as powerful to learn from as like going through a breakup, mm. you know? Yeah. Like it's, it's like there, there's a correlation between the two where you, in your breakup, you learn about what you need to do and adjust and change for you as a person for your next relationship. And the same thing if you f- fail from a business standpoint where like if you tried something went broke or tried a project and it didn't work out where there you had to take, you know, necessary changes in order to change that for your next venture. Facts. Right? Yeah, it's never really a failure. It's a lesson. Exactly. You know yeah. Yeah. But it also depends though, because some people, what people like to understand is that life is never happening to you. It's always happening for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And that you always have the choice in that situation to either be the victim to the situation or you could be the, the person that, you know, overcomes it. But a lot of people, as we spoke about on a story that we we're talking about downstairs, a lot of people victimize themselves to what has happened to them. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, this is happening to me and this and that. Meanwhile, we're 8 billion people in the world, but we're about to hit 8 billion people in the world right now. It's a lot. You know, so like why in, in the hell would the world be revolving around you? And why is there, why is life's sole purpose to piss you off and to make your life miserable? Mm. Mm. You know, so I feel like when people like live in that way, like you're just victimizing yourself and now your problems becomes everybody's problem. Yeah. Now, if somebody says like, you know, like, why aren't you doing this? Or like, why do you feel like you're not successful? It's going to be like, oh, well, you know, life, life made it in a way that it, that it's such, you know, main character energy or some. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, or the other person that tries to overcome it and doesn't let that define them. They're the ones that always ends up coming on top, you know, not sure. See? that's why I always had like this kind of mindset of like. Like in order to be to become like who I am today, and there's there's gonna be a different version of me in the future, right? Yeah. But you quite frankly had to literally, you know, kill the last version of yourself. Like that to person grow. has to be dead. You it has know, to, to grow, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and it's not even like you might be taking certain things like maybe that you haven't perfected, but like for the for the most part, like it has to you have to be like absolutely like a different breed, you know. Do you feel like there was a turning point in your mind where you felt like, like, do you, hold on, let me rephrase my question. Do you feel like there's ever going to be a moment where you're like, I am big enough or I'm satisfied with my body? Or do you feel like there's always going to be something that you're, that you're trying to attain? I thought there was going to be a, a moment like that. So mm-hmm. basically, uh, football, let's say, um, I wanted to be 175. I was 140. And then I got to 175 and I was like, damn. Like, that. I think, I, I thought I was big, you know? And I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm going to get to one like 190 and I'll stop there because 190 me should be like good looking you know what I'm saying so I got to 190 and I was like damn I feel small again so then I went to 200 right now and I'm still like oh I, I feel small even though people see like say that I'm not whatsoever but like um, I think it's just because cause of a uh, body dys- dysmorphia mm-hmm. that everyone has especially at the gym you might seem like the f- guy the fittest guy whatsoever but inside you'll feel like you're not big enough or not mm-hmm, strong enough mm-hmm. or anything so you'll always want more regardless so right now i want more i want to be 210 mm-hmm. and I, I feel like as soon as i'm gonna hit 210 i'll be like 220 220 you know what i'm saying yeah but that's, that's <coughs> most of the people at the gym mm-hmm. but it's more is, is crazy you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like mm, i feel small even though you're not mm-hmm. yeah so i don't think i'm gonna stop but i aim for strength more than being big yeah. So when does gonna happen? Yo, Matt. <laughs> bench a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Disrespect, I do bench a plate. Oh, yeah? I bench For... two. That's cap. I bench two. I've never seen you bench two plates. No, because I don't like do the benching, but... Benching do doesn't bench. do... That? Why are you licking my lips? What the f- <laughs> fuck? Yo, Sergio, did you see this? No. I see what? I wasn't paying attention. Thank you. So when I say living a life with intention or living a life of intention, oh my God, I can't even say it. You completely That's fucked crazy. me up. Yo, by the way, you have to do that thing where whenever we can't English, we'll sorry, take a shot. Oh, that's I'm crazy. I'm yeah. So living a life of intention, what does that typically mean to you? Like, what do you get from that? I get it. Can English? <laughs> I, 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 can English? I get it. No, um, I think it's a good thing because uh, if you have, if you live a life with, with intentions, I feel like it's because you have a, a goal and um, you want to pursue the, those goals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As if you wake up and you're like, shit, okay, today I'm going to do this, this, and that to achieve that. At the end of the day, like, achieve that goal. And the closer you get to your goal, th- the better, you know? Mm-hmm. So having living your life like that with that mentality is a good thing. It's great, yeah. I'm going to show you guys a clip 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna give like a little story time afterwards. But this is kind of part of being a man. It's mm -hmm. like you kind of gotta fuck it all up a little bit. I think so. I think part of learning is dying. I think part of learning is you gotta die a little bit. Because what is learning? Learning is me giving up on my old shit, my old ideas. Those ideas have to die for me to be open to some new shit. A little story time that I had is that I remember this was this was actually two years ago. There's like there's just so many things that I've done in the last like two years that I put myself in in situations that were were not the the best, right? Like I remember well just like last year, I mean not not this year that that passed, but the year before that, like I had spent a whole year on after getting fired from my job, I spent a whole year on on EI, right? Uh employment insurance, mm -hmm. right? Just because I'm like I'm going to give myself this year, right? The pay the pay checks were not were not huge, you know, on on EI to try to make something, you know, of my life with TikTok, right? Yeah. And I I just know that it put me into a mindset where I just went ghost for a period of time and like I wasn't talking to anybody and like he mentioned like I, I had fucked up because I got fired from my job, right? But then that part of me had to die in order to make something of myself. And when I'm telling you that even before that, like that was probably like the second time that I had gone broke. Mm -hmm. There was a time before that I remember that with my ex-girlfriend, there was a time that early on when we were dating, I was driving my mom's car and I had, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not saying I like, I didn't have a penny when I actually had like, you know, a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars in my bank. I didn't. I had literally nothing, bro. I had cents in my bank account and I had no money for gas and I was salvaging for money in the car, right? Just to get money for gas. And I, I came up with like five dollars and my tank was on E and I had to drop her off back home, right? So that was like five bucks that I found in quarters and dollars and whatever lying around the car just so I could put gas. And you know, I told myself that like from that point on, like I never wanted to be in that position again, yeah. right? I fucked it up. I ended up being in that position again, right? A year later with the whole EI situation, right? Yeah. But the fact is like, again, like I could have allowed that to be the point where I kind of just give up, right? Mm -hmm. But two times I killed two versions of myself, right? Yeah. In order to try to become to where I'm at now, Better, yeah. you know? And I'm open to the idea of going broke again because what happens is basically you go, you know, 20 steps you know forward 10 steps back but then you do 40 steps forward yeah and even if you take another 10 steps back well that means you're about to go 100 steps forward on the next time you know what mm -hmm. i mean yeah, yeah. so i embrace that, that that kind of feeling i embrace kind of being humbled in that sense mm -hmm. because like you mentioned it's being in love with the process yep right so and it's always cool and there's, there's a there's a thing that i like to abide by it's um you know if you want to if you want to if you want to start buying things without looking at the price tag you have to start doing work without looking at the clock. Wow. Clip that. Listen, man, the the su success isn't overnight. We're not we're not where we want to be at yet, but we are definitely enjoying the journey every single step of the way. We're having fun, right? We're traveling. We're doing this together. We're seeing ourselves grow as a friendship and also as as, as individuals and as humans. And I think that's what the beauty of life is because. The only thing that we have at the end of the day is, you know, our moments in time. Money, time. like you mentioned, money will come and go, but memories are here to stay. Those are the things you're going to carry with you to the afterlife. Your money is going to be given Send to the next beggar. Else. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. So moments like these that are surreal, like, yes, we're doing like we're doing this podcast because there's a purpose behind it. But at the end of the day, like when we're when we're old and we're thinking back, we're going to be thinking about the times that we had a podcast together. You know, yeah. and we're talking so much shit, and we're living behind a legacy that mm. our kids could then you know follow. So you know, the only thing that we have is moments in time. And your kids are gonna watch this and be like, "Damn, you yeah." From that too. Even even if there is no money to be made out of this, like there's you know, we would have learned so much from just this experience as a whole and the conversation that we've had, right? Because mm. this is essentially an exchange, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a transaction that we're happening, yeah. you know. Like we're learning from each other, we're doing things, we're being, you know, put into contact with, you know, so many, you know, important people that are bringing us one step closer to where we want to be at. So, this is an opportunity that we, you know, took on ourselves because what well, you found th this opportunity and you could have not have shared it with me, you could have not have spoken about me. I could have said, I, you know, like fuck it, I don't see myself doing a podcast, but no, you know, we take the opportunities exactly. We take the opportunities and we make something out of it, right? Pressure makes diamonds, baby. No cap. On that note. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's been your boy, Sergio's Talks. Uh, it's been 
first of all, I forgot to say five stars on Amazon. Oh, five stars on Amazon, yeah. So, yeah, it's been... It's been your boy, Sergio's Talks. It's your boy, Carl. It's your boy, Matt. That's right. Pull up that. Shit. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs> Baja hasta abajo.